Amen. Thank you, Connie. Connie, I think, uh, is there anyone else that's not too well-spoken in Afrikaans? Because if Bo, if Bo's not here, I can I can preach in Afrikaans today. You know? The Afri Yemelse taal. Weet jy nou val die vier? As we in Afrikaans spreek, nie? Connie, I'm saying the fire loves Afrikaans. Eh? And uh, good morning, everyone. It is. Do you understand Afrikaans, Christina? Jy is met Gert getrouw. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Wat die jylle is my groot voorraag om hier te staan, ek, uh, oh sorry, I need to switch back to English. <laughs> okay, I need to switch over, Holy Spirit, help me, okay? Um, it's so funny when we did the baby dedication, this is two beautiful families, oh my, and these kids were the most well-behaved kids ever at any baby dedication I've been a part of, so you guys are doing something right, this is prophetic, um, I think. But uh, I remember one of my best friends that he went to school with me, uh, when he got saved um, radically in his uh, wife at that stage, and um, a couple of weeks after we've, I've walked with him, he gave me a phone call and he said, Yanni, I'm ready. I've got the courage now. I'm like, ready for what? He said, I'm ready for the circumcision. <laughs> and I told him, listen, buddy, we don't do that thing anymore, okay? <laughs> You can relax. He was like sweating. It's like, oh, Lord, thank you for. So we don't do the circumcision thing anymore. Well, not in this church. Um, you know, the physical ones. So I was so, he was so grateful. <laughs> but I have to say, I still respect him and I honor him. I don't know. I don't know if any one of you would have been there. But anyways, I respect him as a man of God. But anyways, um, let's, let's just, while you're sitting there, maybe just open up your heart and you'll close your eyes quickly. Let's just, make <laughs> Let's just pause quickly, take a deep breath, <laughs> and say, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, <laughs> fill me up with the goodness of Jesus. Just focus on his presence. Jesus, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will anoint every word, that your love, let your peace rain down on us right now, peace, joy, the glory of Jesus, we love you, Abba Father, Yeshua, Holy Spirit, Amen, come on. Come on, take a deep breath. Now, last week, those of you who weren't here, last week, Esma had a, such an awesome word for the season. We find ourselves in which there's a lot of prophetic symbolism and a lot of prophetic meanings in seasons we find ourselves in. And, and this year is really seen as a year of a sabbatical, a year of rest. And I can, the Lord has been speaking to me this whole year uh, so many times about rest. And last week, Ismay gave such a powerful word for the season of understanding what that means and how we tap into the season and, and, and make the most of it. So what does that actually mean? Now, if you look at a sabbatical, it is not a, a, se- a passive season. We just need to make that very clear. Being in a sabbatical doesn't mean you're passive. You're still in the war. We're still, you know, fighting a war alongside of Jesus that he has already won. And we're tapping into this victorious fire that we can walk in. Now, the one thing I want to quickly remind us in, if you find yourself in a season of rest, it is a time to reflect. It's a time to reflect, to, to just quiet yourself and say, okay, where am I at at this moment with my journey, with, with, with my walk with God? I mean, people do fall out of love. People that, I mean... Even in the Bible, it says you've lost your first love. It's like half time in a rugby game, in a soccer game. You know, you need to realign yourself and say, listen, maybe I need to change my game plan. Maybe we need to do something different. So it's a time to reflect. It's also a time to remember. It's to remember all the testimonies, all the incredible times that God did come through for you, all the incredible healings you saw, all the incredible provisions you had in your life. The things you prayed for and God came through for you. It's to remember that. We so often forget. So when we're in this season of rest, let's remember. I mean, God told the Israelites to 
Hulle moes altare gebou het. Wat is een altaar in Engels? Een altaar. It's the same. Huh? Wat is een altaar in Engels? Een altaar. Oh my word, that is so humiliating. Anyways. And, <laughs> you know, he told them, listen, raise up an altar so that your kids can remember the things that I've done for you. And the other thing is, it's also time to pursue, to re-enter and to realign yourself. It's like a Formula One race. I mean, the driver pulls off, he gets new tires, he gets fuel, he gets everything ready for the next part of the race. And then he joins, he re-enter the race. So when we find ourselves in this season, I want to encourage all of you, it's a time to reflect. It's a time to remember all the incredible things God has already done. Remember that testimonies. Don't forget the testimonies. And it's a time to realign yourself and to re-enter this incredible journey that we are a part of. I want to read two scriptures, Colossians 2, 14 to 15. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrants that stood to indict us. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all, and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross, and it's nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. I mean, how incredible is this? Jesus made a public spectacle of the enemy, displaying, listen, we won the battle. And when we find ourselves in this season of rest and sabbatical, let's remember, let's remind ourselves of what Jesus did. Then Exodus 14, 13 to 15, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. It's time to move on. It's time to remember that, listen, the Lord is fighting on our behalf. Yes, we got a part to play, but I feel like we need to remember this. I've had so many interesting conversations the last couple of weeks that it's, 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 there's a similar pattern in so many people I've spoken to over the last couple of weeks. Uh, yesterday, we go, yesterday we went to very good friends of ours to minister to them. And this guy is probably one of the most apostolic leaders that I've ever encountered since being born again. I mean, there's, there's an anointing on this guy's life that, that, that is just ridiculous. But he's struggling with depression. And it's a battle that he's been fighting for quite a while now. And I remember this guy. I looked up to this guy in such a, I mean, I'm still in awe of this guy's ability to, to, to present the authority of Jesus. This, it's just incredible, this guy's gifting. But the enemy is a liar. And the enemy is a deceiver. And we went to minister to him yesterday, and I had to t- remind him that, listen, we need to remind ourselves to take every thought captive, to resist the enemy. I mean, he likes coming towards us with these familiar spirits. He likes coming towards us with these lies. And we, when we come into agreement with this, that's when he gets his power. His power lies in us agreeing with the lie. And we prayed over them as a family. We prayed over him. And just incredible things happened. But there's a pattern that I've realized that people are really struggling. And I want to I'm going to prove to you today. I'm going to prove to you all today in the couple of minutes that I do have available to me that there's a lot of promises in your life. There's a lot of breakthrough in your life that you've looked at and you've seen it as failure. And I want to prove to you today that it wasn't failure. God is part of it. 
Paul was in prison in Philippians 1 verse 12. And then I'm going to give a couple of examples to you guys. I want you to know, dear ones, what has happened to me has not hindered, but helped my ministry of preaching the gospel, causing it to expand and spread to many people. For now the elite Roman guards and government officials overseeing my imprisonment have plainly recognized that I am here because of my love for the anointed one. And what I'm going through has actually caused many believers to become even more courageous in the Lord and to be bold and passionate to preach the word of God, all because of my chains. This is a guy in prison. I mean, Paul was arguably one of the most impactful Christians that has ever walked on this planet. And now he's in prison. He was caught by the Romans. He's in, he's in chains, as you can see here. And he's struggling. But yet he is saying God is using this and the gospel is spreading. A lot of people can look at this and say to themselves, you know what? Paul actually failed. Maybe he should have used more wisdom. And, you know, maybe Paul could have been more subtle in his approach. Maybe, the, maybe Paul was too zealous and, you know, maybe he could have used a little bit more maturity. If this was today, in the season we find ourselves in, I promise you, half of the church community would have probably said, you know what, Paul, he didn't use a lot of wisdom. He should have been more careful. This is doing more damage for the gospel. He's speaking out loudly, you know, um, towards governments, towards leaders. This is probably the way a lot of people would have seen him today. Now, I don't know how many of you have read God's generals and a lot of these amazing Christian leaders that we've had over the last couple of hundred years. I mean, we're talking about leaders that impacted culture. You know, whether it was the reformers or whether it was the revivalists in the healing revivals. But if John G. Lake were to be alive today, he would have probably been very controversial. Those of you who know John G. Lake, you know, he would have probably been, you know, controversial but yet yeah, this guy wow what a man of God the, the, the problem is that when we find it in our culture today is so many people see certain persecutions and certain results we see as failures I want to make a statement quickly let me just find it here just because you did not get the result or the testimony you were after, it doesn't make it a failure. Just because the result doesn't look like this incredible testimony, it doesn't make it a failure at all. If you pray for someone that is sick, and that person doesn't get healed, it's not a failure. In the eyes of the king, that's not a failure at all. But you might feel a bit embarrassed. You might feel like, yes, I stepped out in faith and nothing happened. No, something did happen. In the spirit, something always happened when we step out in faith. A seed is planted. God is starting to do a work. Failure and success in the kingdom looks completely different than what the outside world views it. Now, if you look at Abraham, I'm going to give a couple of examples here because we, we, we had a bride a week ago with some, some friends of ours and this lady she is just so passionate about what she's doing. She's got a, a gift. She's got an incredible, I don't want to say too much with what she's doing. But she had this opportunity to be part of a, a, a quite a popular, famous TV show. And she was so excited about this. Last year, they, they called her and said, listen, we want to draw you into this uh, popular TV show. And the whole December, she trained, she practiced, she spent money to buy new um, equipment and she was so excited with this and then after the first week of being part of the the show after two days it's sort of like they they called her and long story short is she pretty much got asked to that they don't need her anymore so we went to bry with them we went to ko with them and i mean she you could see that inside of her she felt like listen i failed i missed it you know i, I shared with so many people that this was my my big break. This was my opportunity, you know, to, to show my abilities. And here they, they, they actually asked me, listen, to not, to not come back. 
But while she was sharing that, I was sitting opposite her, and I felt in my spirit, you know what? You know what? That was never God's plan for you. I just felt it in my heart. I didn't know what to say to her. We don't... We only started knowing them, you know, the last couple of weeks. But that next week, she came to speak to us again, and she testified. That, listen, as she was sort of like left out of that show, two other people, very famous in her industry, called her and gave her the exact opportunities that she actually hoped for. Incredible opportunities that were so much better than what she could have ever asked for. But the thing was, what happened is we, we sort of see an opportunity and we apply our own emotions and our own will inside of that. And we, we think that is it. But I want to prove to you today that, listen, there's so many times where you think you fail, but God is part of the journey. When I was in full-time ministry, I think I shared it quickly the one time. The Lord asked us, uh, that was about eight years ago, that, or seven years ago, that, that, that we should leave full-time ministry and I should go into the marketplace. And I mean, that was a horrible idea for me because we loved full-time ministry. We really enjoyed it. And I went back into the marketplace. And the first two years was horrible. I mean, I hated, <laughs> it was really horrible. I, I, you know, I mean, there were certain nights that me and my wife would sit there and I would literally almost cry. And I would like, Lord, was this what I was supposed to do? A lot of people from the outside was probably looking and saying, you know what? I think Yanni missed it. I think he missed it, you know. I think he should still be there where he was supposed to be. And the incredible thing was, then I did start my own business a couple of years later, because that's what the Lord said I should do. And in that first year of starting my business, my wife got sick. She got ill. So we went through a journey of her being treated and, and all of those things. You know, we, we started having kids. The kids didn't sleep well. You know, you're tired all the time. And my biggest client that I had, he lost his job and he couldn't pay me anymore. And it was a lot of money. So now I'm, so now I'm here with my, my business. I'm like, Lord, what is happening? It feels like disappointment. It feels like everything is going wrong. But we knew that this is what God has called us to do. And that is so often the case with so many people I talk with is that they're walking, they're stepping out in faith. And suddenly they're experiencing that that just the difficult seasons that we find ourselves in. And I want to use a couple of examples that we find in the Bible. The first one is Abraham. Now, Abraham, I mean, the man of faith, he left everything to go to a land that he didn't know, and he didn't know where he should be going, and then his wife fell pregnant at the age of 90. Now, if this was today, how many people would have told, listen, Abraham, that's bad timing, you know? <laughs> I don't think that's the season you should find yourself in at the moment. But yet Abraham was 100% in the will of God. When Jesus died on the cross, I don't know about you, but just think about it. If you were a disciple that left everything, you left your job, you left your family, you left your loved ones, and you followed a Messiah. Now the Messiah is being killed on the cross. And you're sitting there, you're like, okay, is this it? they went back fishing do you think they thought that maybe they made a mistake there's a reason they went back to go fishing because they thought they made a mistake they thought that it's all over and they are basically the joke of their town of their culture of their nation but yet they were not it looked like they were failing it looked like they were making the wrong decisions but yet they were 100 percent in the will of God. When you look at Joseph, Joseph was literally asked to, to lead the, the household of one of the, um, the leaders or the army generals there in, in, in um, Egypt. And he was um, basically thrown in prison because they said he basically raped the, the, the wife of that, that guy. He went into prison with that title on him. I mean, you would look at Joseph and you would look at the dreams that he had and you would say, Joseph, I think you missed it completely. But yet what happened? Joseph was 100% in the will of God. If you looked at Joseph's, Joseph's life, you would say that he was failing, but yet he was winning. You know, I love it with Moses. When Moses ran away from, from Egypt, um, I thought about this quite a lot. I, as the prince of Egypt, he probably had a lot more influence 
as a shepherd back in the desert that came back to Pharaoh with no authority from a human's perspective. But when he was the prince of Egypt, you would think that that would, would have been the perfect time for him to be the deliverer of the Israelites. But yet God had to take out Egypt out of him. And God wanted the shepherd. He didn't want the prince of Egypt to lead his people. He needed a shepherd. So if you look at, look at his life, it almost looked as if he made a couple of wrong decisions. He, he did kill someone, okay? But it looks as if he made a couple of wrong decisions and he would have never been able to fulfill the promises that was on his life. Yet God was busy on a journey with him. The reason I'm sharing some of these examples is I believe so strongly that there's so many of us here today that feel that we have failed. That feel that there's moments and instances in your life that maybe have happened over the last six months, maybe it happened two years ago, but now you are suddenly a bit stuck and frozen and afraid to again take out, to, to step out in faith. Why? Because you did it before. And you didn't get the result you were after. But I want to encourage you today, and I want to speak it out loudly, that that lie will be broken off of your life. Fruitfulness in the kingdom doesn't look the same as what this world expects from us. If you look at the ascension of Jesus, when Jesus was ascended into heaven, there was 500 witnesses, 500 people in his church. He had a church of 500 people. But yet what happened? Only 120 people stayed. 10 days later at the day of Pentecost. I mean, Jesus told them, listen, wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. I mean, these 500 people witnessed one of the most incredible miracles and, and sightings probably ever. I mean, just think about it. Seeing your Messiah being taken up into heaven with the angels. I mean, isn't that enough to stay the course? But yet from the 500 people, only 120 left, uh, were stayed. 75% of the church left. They, I mean, 10 days was too much for them. But the 120 people stayed. That 120 people probably thought like, listen, let's keep on pressing in. I mean, 380 already left but they stayed. Now, the reason why so many people struggle, and the reason why so many people, I want to ask the band, Christina, can you guys maybe come up, please? And the reason why so many people, I'm sharing so many of these examples, because I want to point out to you that if we were to be alive in the times of these people, you would hear people talk and say, listen, they've missed it. They failed. They stepped out in faith. But you know what? They probably didn't hear God correctly. They probably thought they heard from the Holy Spirit, but they missed it. And I want to today ask every single one of you to ask yourself the question, what did God speak over your life? And what is the moments that you had where you did step out and you maybe didn't get the result you were after? I'm going to ask everyone to stand up quickly. So often... The fear of man masquerades as wisdom so often. And as I've spoken to a lot of people, I have found that it was the fear of man that have kept them from stepping out again. It was that fear of failure. It was that fear of disappointment, you know, fear of disappointing people, disappointing their spouse. So they rather played it safe. We are not called to play it safe. Not one of us are called to play it safe. We've been anointed by the anointed one. So Father, I want to pray right now. And Father, just like we saw so many of these examples of people thinking that they have failed, but yet, Lord, they changed history. Yet, Father, they impacted cultures because they did step out again. And Father, I want to pray that we will listen to your spirit. And Father, I pray that you will reveal to every single one of us that moments, that instances where we had, where we did step out in faith, where we did do something radical and we didn't get the result we were after. 
where people told us, listen, you should stop doing that. You, you are too radical. You are too crazy for Jesus. It's not worth it. What are people going to think? Thank you, Lord, that you are freeing us from that lies right now. Thank you, Father, that you are freeing us from every thought that says that we failed. And I want to ask right now that as you stand there and the Holy Spirit is reminding you of incredible promises that you will step out in faith today and say, Lord, I align my spirit. I align my calling. I remember today. I remember that word. And I realign myself with the callings of God. If there's some of the ministry team that maybe want to come forward and, and as we're going to worship, as the band is going to lead us here in the last couple of minutes we do have, if you want to come forward and say, you know what, I want that fear to be broken off of my life. I want that lie of failure to be broken off of my life. Please do come forward. Let us pray with you. Thank you, Lord.